Well, both Linda and Alan say they've seen flying saucers. Not only that, but that they've actually been abducted and taken on board these UFOs. Linda, can you just briefly describe to me what sort of people did you see on board the spacecraft? They were very tall, around about 6'6", six, six, and they had navy blue coveralls on, right up to the neck. They were sort of dark skin, yellowy, sort of grey skin, slanted eyes and very black hair. But that's not something that you can remember in your conscious memory, No, is it? not at all. It's only in your subconscious, which that's is why correct. we brought Joe Keaton in, who's a hypnotist. Now, Joe, I hope you're going to help them unlock their memories by taking them back to a subconscious state. Can you now prepare Linda and Alan for hypnosis, please, for a close encounter of what happened to them? Would you both make yourself more comfortable? Come further down in your chair, please. Mm -hmm. Try and rest your head so that it won't go too far back. You see, if your head falls forward, your throat will be restricted. Now, don't close your eyes. Well, we will be joining Debbie and, in fact, seeing more of those uh, those two people later on in the program and perhaps reliving some of those moments in their subconscious. should be very interesting indeed. But for the moment, we'll leave... There's a very lively debate there in soccer hooliganism. I suspect that's a subject we'll be coming back to before the end of this new series of Central Weekend. I'm actually in another part of the studio, as you, uh, in, in the building rather, as you obviously know, because we've been go undergoing hypnosis here. And uh, we have two of our guests tonight, Linda Jones and Alan Godfrey. L Alan actually hasn't gone under as such yet, but Linda has. And Joe Keaton, you've been managing to take Linda back to one of the moments when she was able to go aboard or at least confront something which she couldn't explain. Now, she thinks it was some kind of spacecraft, some UFO that she can't explain. How far did you actually get with her? Oh, we got her to a point of such extreme terror. You were in the people yes, in the I, studio I whilst it, yeah. the heart was racing, the breathing uh, was uh, accelerated. She was looking at something that frightened her. And then, very, very slowly, she couldn't really explain what it was. First it was a ball coming out of the river. Then she said, it's above the river. And then she says, gone to the top of the tip. We'll be and gradually, she slipped. Whether into a deeper or not, that's when she started talking to us. Okay, well, Linda, I know, is still obviously a bit groggy at the moment. She'll be talking to us later on in the program. Now, Linda, you were uh, walking along the banks of the River Mersey in Manchester, in Didsbury, yes, where you live, yeah. with two of your children. Yes. And you saw what? Uh, we were walking along the banks, picking wildflowers, uh, we saw this object come over our heads. It was this oval object, pinky orange, which landed down over a hill vertically. We ran up to see what it was. Our first thought was it was an aircraft on fire. We live quite near Manchester Airport. It was big? Oh, it was very big. It was 60 foot across. 60 foot across when we saw this object hovering two foot off the ground. Uh, we just stared at it, we were transfixed, the three of us. We were just watching this object, and it just seemed to hover, and there was complete silence, no noise at all. And when you ran towards it, what was happening on the ground? Um, well, nothing as I we thought, didn't the grass move or something? Uh, that's when we were running back. When you were running back? Yes. What happened? Yes, when we were running away from the object, the grass seemed to move at the side of us and at the front of us, sort of blowing about. What, to cut a sort of path for you, as it were? No, no, it was, the grass was overgrown oh, on the river bank, but it seemed to be blowing over. And when you got home, what happened? What did you, what did you Well, when we got home, we saw my husband, who then was on uh, a, a shift, a 210 shift, and I said, what are you doing home? Because we'd gone out of the house at 7.30 in the evening, and obviously he was home, it was dark. Uh, we didn't realise until 18 months later that there was an hour missing out of our time. Oh, so you had a similar experience to, to Dorothy here? Yes. Yeah, lost time. Yes. And there was some effect on your skin, wasn't there? Yes, was my told. eyes were burnt and scaly underneath my eyes. Now, you can't account for that? No, I can't <coughs> account for that at all. It wasn't, well, it was evening, wasn't it? It wasn't sunny. I mean, it, uh, was, it was dusk. It was dusk, nine so o'clock on an August evening. So it, it certainly imagine you wouldn't have got a suntan, would you? No, no, no I don't think right. so. Um, <laughs> I hadn't been out that day. Now, some time later, 18 months later, just to, to move this on a bit, you were persuaded to go and see a hypnotist. And yes. you and your daughter, I gather, both gave that hypnotist an almost identical uh, version of, of yes. what, what had happened yes, previously. Yes, that's correct. And, no. and when you recounted it to the hypnotist, under hypnosis, yes. what did you tell him? 
Uh, under hypnosis, I don't remember anything at all about the hypnosis, only what I have seen on videotape. Sure. I must stress this. You've seen yourself back. That's correct. And My only conscious memory of this object was seeing the object, it seemed to disappear and appear, and we ran away from it. Right. right. Uh, oh, we saw it actually following on the tail of a plane going into Manchester Airport as mm. we were nearing our home. But I don't remember anything about the hypnosis, only what I have seen on videotape. Mm. And I find it very hard to accept what I actually said Which was? under hypnosis. Well, what was said was I ran down the hill, the three of us ran down the hill. We thought we were running home. We went into this man in dark clothing, <coughs> tall, dark eyes. Then there was a sensation of floating and then being on a table and have feel, having feelings of ice put on our legs and lights shone in our eyes and that's all I remember. And there were six of them and they all looked the same. Now, I just can't accept this, but this is what's on the That's videotapes. what you said under hypnosis, right? That's correct. Now, I have to say, well, I, I imagine anyway, that when, mm. you, when you recount this story of what happened to you under hypnosis to your chums in Manchester, you don't get an entirely sympathetic hearing. I don't talk to them a lot about that. Mm. <laughs> on a November evening about ten years ago, Linda Jones took a young son and daughter for a walk along a Manchester canal bank. Suddenly they saw a bright light in the sky. It looked like it was going to hit us directly. We ducked into the grass. It landed vertically in a field over a hill. We ran up the hill. We thought we were going to see um, an aircraft in flames or something, but it was just this object, total silence, not making any noise at all. It was then shaped like a half moon, really, girder structure, the undercarriage of it. We stood there watching this object transfixed, and we stared at it. It was hovering two foot off the ground. It turned out that Linda lost track of about half an hour of time during the encounter. At first, she told no one. Years later, under hypnosis, she recalls an experience on board the craft, but she doesn't like to recall it now. I don't think I should remember. I, I think whoever blanked my mind out, or if it was fear that blanked my mind out, I do not know, but I know that I should not remember. It was a summer's evening. We were walking along and I had this wild flower book with me. And I was getting the children interested and asking them, sort of playing a little game really, see see what, what that one's called, see if you can identify it, you know, that flower. And then my daughter said, Mum, look, the moon is coming towards us. We looked up and we saw this sort of rugby ball shape which was just hurtling towards us at an angle. We sort of crouched in the long grass quickly to avoid it because our first thought being it was an aircraft on fire. I thought, oh goodness me, my life flashed in front of me when I saw this thing. My daughter was absolutely terrified. We then ran up the hill to see what was going on. And we saw this object, which was shaped like a crescent moon. Oh my God! It was physical. It was a physical object. I felt like I could have gone up and touched it. I felt myself sort of drawn to it. Well, really, I just wanted to have a closer look. Probably curiosity. And I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was like a, a bad dream, like a, like a nightmare. Mum! Mum, come back! Mum, what are you doing? Come back! It was like time had stood still. Mum, what are you doing? Come back! And I don't actually remember going right up close to it. I got as close as I can, but it seemed to burn my face, that the light was too bright. Mum! Mum, come back! Mom, come back! Jimmy, come back! I have never seen anything like that in my life before that day and have never seen anything since. Aliens.
One evening, whilst out walking with her young son and daughter, they saw a bright light that came towards them and hovered just above the ground. Then followed an amazing experience when time seemed to stand still. Now, Linda, exactly what did you see that evening? I saw a light that came over us. I thought it was an aircraft on fire. We ran up two embankments, my daughter, my son and myself, where we stood at the top of the embankment to see 30 yards away from us this unusual object. I did not know what it was at the time. How big was it? The object was around 60 feet wide and it was hovering two foot off the ground and there was no noise at all. So what did you think it was at that stage? I really didn't know. I didn't know what it was at all. Did it have a, a particular shape? Uh, yes, uh, it had a rather unusual shape. It was shaped rather like a boat. It didn't land, it just hovered. Uh, it was a girder-like structure and it had a magnesium light on the top which seemed to be a part from the structure didn't seem attached. There were no doors, no windows, anything. I just couldn't make it out. We just stood there and stared at now, it. Now, were you frightened by this? Um, well, actually, we were just froze to the spot. It was rather like when you have a bad dream, you know, and you sort of can't run. You want to run away from something and you can't. And that is exactly how we felt. I felt myself drawn towards it. I was walking towards it. It was curiosity on my part. And my daughter said, please come away from it, Mum. She did sense danger. I didn't. Now, did you think it could be a UFO at the time? Or? No, I didn't. Because I, I just wasn't into UFOs. I didn't know anything about UFOs. So you'd seen it. You, you, you were scared. Um, what happened then, exactly? My conscious, my conscious memory of the event was that we saw the thing, we stood there, it went away before our eyes without us actually seeing it. I don't remember the thing going away. Then we ran away. We ran down the embankments and on our way home. That was my conscious memory so of the event. Suddenly it was there, you were looking at it. Yes. And then the next thing you remember is yes. that you're running away from it. That's correct, yes. So what happened when you got home at, at that stage? Well, we hadn't quite got home at that stage when I saw this object behind an aircraft to the left of me going into Manchester Airport. Um, there is but a lot of air You're sure traffic. that there wasn't a, an airplane? It was The first one was an airplane because there is a lot of air traffic going overhead. It was following directly on its tail into the airport. Now, when you got back home, what did you do? Tell your husband about yes, it? Yes, yes, I told my husband about it. My son described it in his own words. He was four year old and he said, Daddy, take me back to see the crashed boat. That was his description. Take me back to see the crashed boat. Got hold of his father's hand and his father said, no, hey, you know what's wrong here? And he said, Linda, what's wrong with your eyes? My eyes were all burnt and scaly, like I'd been in the sun. C could you feel that there was something wrong with, with your eyes? Or? No. Um, the funny thing was, I felt so elated about the whole thing at the time when I came home. My daughter didn't. She, she was absolutely terrified. It was sort of mixed feelings, really, about the whole thing. Now, how did you know at that time that there was something wrong, that there wasn't every... you couldn't remember everything? Um, well, I didn't really think about that. Um, I just told my husband, I, I didn't look at the time, I didn't have a watch on or anything else. My husband was home, uh, he was a shift worker and he was on the 210 shift at the time and he was home. And I said, what are you doing home? Because I'd gone out that evening at half past seven and we'd seen a friend to their destination and which only takes, the walk that we usually take, only takes 20 minutes or less if you're walking fast. But we were gone a number of hours. So somehow you, you've lost an hour There at was least an hour there. missing of my time. But yes. You couldn't remember what happened in that hour I until don't later when know. you were hypnotised, is That's that right? That's right. I don't remember consciously what happened. In what that happened hour. under hypnosis? What did you. Talk I have about? only seen videotapes of the hypnosis. I don't remember 
what happened under hypnosis. I have seen some videotapes of the hypnosis. I was regressed. I apparently saw a man as I came down the bank. I then had a floating sensation. I was on board and I was undergoing some medical examination. Now you were on board. What, what did aliens, if they were there, what did they look like? Uh, they were around six foot six, uh, six foot six tall, um, yellowy skin, dark suited. Oh, what about this examination? What apparently well, I just did you had remember? feelings of, of having ice put on my legs. And every time I try to see something, and I'm talking about what I've seen on videotapes, I had lights shone in my eyes. Now, was there any pain attached to all this? No. But during the regression, did you come up with uh, feelings of pain? Or? Um, there were feelings of pain shown on the videotape of the regression, but I didn't have any feelings of pain when I came out of the regression. Tim, now, there's an account from Linda. Have you any questions at all for her? Yes, uh, you had some physical symptoms following this yes, extraordinary experience, too. Linda. Mm -hmm. You said you had trouble with your eyes. Yes. Um, your skin, was it just yes. your face? Were there any um, other... Any my, other... Face, my face was burned. Um, I developed a lump on my neck, um, which is very unusual. Every time I go in hospital to have a thyroidectomy, it disappears. Yeah. And that's happened on two occasions. Mm -hmm. is, is there anything else which unusual which it was, has um, happened to you physically since then? There are a few gynaecological things, yes. Yes. And what is the main problem there? Well, the main problem there was that I uh, did seek medical advice about that and I was told by a gynaecologist that all my eggs had gone, disappeared. I didn't relate the story to him, you know, I, uh, he didn't know anything about it. But you'd but never had an illness or anything which could have explained no, that? No, no, not at all. Tim, any other questions there or do you feel you can you can make a diagnosis of, of what was going on. I certainly can't make a diagnosis of what, of what was going on, I'm afraid. It's, it's certainly typical of many of the more bizarre encounters that have been reported now by hundreds of people, and I don't pretend to know the answer to it, I'm afraid. What I am satisfied with is, is uh, Linda's honesty, at any rate. So do you, do you and she think, had two witnesses with her, which always helps. Of do course. you think it's possible, though, that what appeared to her was an entity, a being, rather than her imagining it? I think it is, it is possible, yes. Certainly there have been some very strange encounters like this where people have reported seeing aliens, extraterrestrials, if you like. So this is entirely consistent with uh, such reports. Hilary, do you have any questions here for Linda? Well, one thing does occur to me. Was this a one-off event in your life? Had you had anything before or subsequently? Uh, no, nothing at all before it. And nothing afterwards either? And this was just something that happened once and never um, again? That happened for the first time in 1979. Mm. There have been other occasions. Um, not as dramatic as that event and not as bizarre. But you felt that you were meeting the same entities? Oh, I didn't meet the same entities, no. no. But what no. were these other strange happenings? That the other strange happenings? Uh, well, uh, I used to, when I was working, I had um, a badge made out of, you know, rather like these supermarket girls have, was made out of Dymo tape, and uh, where the name was punched in. I came home one day, took my coat off, and my husband said, where's your name off your badge? I said, I don't know. On three other occasions, the name actually disappeared in front of other people, in front of other people while they were looking at me, and the badge was red hot. It actually melted. In front of, of people's very eyes, yes, it, it disappeared? Yes, yes, mm. yes. Well, Henry, what do you think was, was going on, either in that or in the case where she met or believe she met someone or something? Yes. Well, obviously, I couldn't possibly give you um, a, a personal account of what was going on without asking her very many more questions than that. I can only speak in very general terms. But one thing I would like to say, first of all, is that uh, I don't doubt for one moment the sincerity of uh, the witness, nor do I question that something very important happened. 
But what I do think we should all consider is the possibility that something else was happening than what appeared to be happening. So you, you'd say then that she didn't or couldn't have met alien beings? I think it's very unlikely. I think the probabilities are all against it. I think there's a better alternative explanation, yes. Well, I'll, I'll drag that out of you later <laughs> if I can, okay. but, but Tim, I'm intrigued. What convinces you of the possibility that there are alien beings out there? Well, there have now been probably millions of reports. And what convinces me particularly is the fact that thousands of them have been made by highly qualified observers whose jobs it is to know, you know what's in the sky, like airline pilots, military pilots, and so forth. And there have now been, according to Dr. Richard Haynes of, of NASA, over 3,000 reports of UFO sightings made by military and airline pilots. And I've interviewed a good many pilots, and I'm convinced that, that they're telling the truth. And many of them um, risk not just their reputations, but also their jobs sometimes in reporting these what things. What sort of things are they, they coming up with? Just sightings or abductions or what? Well, to give you an example, a few months ago I interviewed an American, a former bomber pilot, United States Air Force, who in 1955 actually chased a UFO at almost ground level. He flew down to 200 feet. His entire crew saw the object. It was saucer-shaped. It was large, and there was a shadow beneath it, and they chased it for miles across, across uh, Alabama. And there was a strange vortex from each uh, end of, of the craft, clearly visible, throwing up dust from the soil beneath. So if there are all these reports of alien spaceships, why don't the, the public hear about them more often? Why don't we know about it? Well, we do, I think. I think uh, after all, there have now been many, many books on the subject, and the newspapers occasionally cover the subject. Unfortunately, it's uh, too often left to the tabloids to deal with the subject. So you're, you're convinced people have actually seen UFOs. How about alien beings? There have been, I would say, hundreds of reports of encounters, and we have hundreds of reports similar to Linda's where people claim to have had some sort of uh, extraordinary experience. Has well, Linda, man Linda actually them? herself is not claiming, but this is because this is what's come out un under hypnotic That's regression. True, That's very true. But um, it would appear as if people have actually had some extraordinary experiences. But have they ever been, been captured, for example? Are bodies of aliens some, in some morgue? In Many witnesses have come forward saying that they've actually seen UFOs which have been recovered by the United States government, for example, at a number of bases. Uh, the most recent witness is a physicist who was formerly employed at a top secret Air Force base in the United States who claims that he was actually working on some of these recovered craft. And, and there are bodies as well? or Apparently, yes. There have been many uh, descriptions of alien bodies stored at a number of bases throughout the states. So in America, anywhere else? Or we... Oh, there have been stories from other countries as well, but the best documented ones come from the United States. And we have people like Dr. Robert Sarbacker, who worked for the United States government's Research and Development Board, who in 1983 confirmed that the United States authorities had actually retrieved alien so... artifacts as well as bodies. Where do you think they come from then? If you're... I've been studying this subject for now well over 30 years and I haven't the faintest idea, I'm sorry, I haven't the faintest idea where they come from. I am satisfied, however, that there's more than one type of UFO. Moreover, that there are different categories of phenomena. So we're not just dealing with something simplistic like uh, little green men coming from another planet in a nuts and bolts spacecraft. Some of them could well be, in fact, I'm convinced that some of them are perfectly solid. Others behave in a manner which suggests that either they come from another dimension altogether, which occasionally interreacts with our own, or that they are perfectly solid but are able to manipulate time, space, matter, and people's minds. So why are they coming then? What do they want with us on this planet, do you think? I haven't the faintest idea again, I'm sorry. But I mean, one theory uh, is that if these abductions are true, there is a genetic interest. 
because many people have reported probes um, that over have been taken, even sperm on occasions. I know this is outrageous stuff, but uh, that is the fact of the matter, that people have reported that that is what has happened. So you think they could actually be breeding for some well, purpose, human beings? Bud Hopkins, who's an American researcher, has done a great deal of research uh, in this area, feels that there's a possibility that the aliens are creating a hybrid. That's his theory. I don't know if it's true. Hilary, now, what, what would you make of all that? There's evidence that it's convinced Tim. Well, no, it's not really evidence that Tim has offered us. He's offered us testimony. He's offered us what people have said they saw and what they've said they've seen. There's virtually no tangible evidence that we can actually point to and photograph. But there are thousands of testimonies. Mm. Yes, thousands of testimonies, but uh, so long as we have to rely on what witnesses say they saw or experienced, there's always going to be an element of doubt. So what could they be when, when that uh, pilot was chasing an object yeah. across the oh, sky? Oh, I don't doubt that, that, that there are objects in the sky which are not identified, but when we um, have an opportunity to examine them, they usually turn out to be capable of some kind of natural explanation. We've had a very good example this very summer, sorry, last summer, uh, in which we had the cornfields, the circles in the cornfields, when the apparent uh, mystery is, I think, capable of a perfectly natural explanation. And it does seem as if the very force which creates these circles is also capable of creating a luminous plasma up in the sky, which could easily be mistaken for a UFO. So how, how so, do you work that out then, that there is a natural force, you're saying, yes. which, mm. like, like a wind, <clears throat> can create these perfect circles, yes. and yet creates a plasma? Yes, the very same force also generates a plasma. You, uh, the, the physics of it is far too complicated for me to even understand, let alone try to tell you about. But um, the, the, you know, the meteorologists are working on it. They've got good, solid scientific hypotheses for it. And it would seem as if there are generated, in these circumstances, objects, genuine, unidentified flying objects, which are capable of being mis mis mistaken for UFOs. Tim, can you accept that that is an explanation for objects out there? Not altogether, no. And, and going back to, to the mystery circles, it's peculiar. If this is uh, a meteorological phenomenon, that it restricts itself mostly to Wessex, because most of the circles in Great Britain have been reported in Hampshire and Wiltshire, and I've yet to see a satisfactory meteorological explanation for that. So Hilary, what's oh, special yes. about Wessex? Well, no, I mean, there, there's a great deal we don't understand about this, this particular thing. The research is only at its early stages. We know there's a mystery, but we also know that there are good grounds for believing that there is a natural explanation. And that's really as far as we ought to take it at this stage. I mean, let us accept the f the fact there is a possibility of an alternative. And if we may get back to Linda's case, I would like to say, there again, I think there is an alternative. And what is that? And the, the alternative, in my b belief, is a psychological one. Now, this is not meant to be in any way an attack on Linda's sincerity or integrity. I believe that she had something very important happen to her but I believe that it could be interpreted as a psychological experience which took place inside her and which she projected outside. Linda, do you think that's possible? Because no, your, your daughter you seemed to experience the same thing. No, you, you just can't generalise with every UFO witness like that. It, it isn't possible. What I had was a physical sighting. There was three of us, nuts mm. and bolts sighting. I know things have happened after the fact, after the sighting, but I did not have any problems at that particular time, no problems at all. But everyone has problems. They don't have to see a UFO to have problems. Here, so there is no psychological disturbance. I have had doctors, psychiatrists before they have done any experiments on me at all. They have had to make sure that I have been 100% sane. Um, is that what you're suggesting, though, that you have to have a problem to have this experience? Not necessarily a problem. It could be some uh, situation which needs to be worked out. It, it could be, for instance, I mean, it's one of the interesting things that so many of these experiences happen to teenagers who are always very vulnerable people. And I think that many cases can be explained in the search by a teenager for someone she can relate to. 
I met a girl in France, for instance, who had met, as she told me, the Virgin Mary on 30 or 40 occasions. I met a girl in Dagenham who claimed to have met an extraterrestrial person who came up to her bedroom. In both these cases, I think it most likely that what was happening was that these people needed somebody that they could confide in, and they, as it were, created this helpful, kindly being to help guide them through their, their situation. So it's imagination. People are creating images, beings, yes. for some reason. Tim, can you go along with that? Up to a point, yes, of course, but I think it's worth mentioning that uh, <clears throat> Dr. Elizabeth Slater, an American psychologist, conducted psychological tests on nine abductees, people claiming to have been abducted, and she found them extremely intelligent, and she was absolutely convinced. She, she did the tests without knowing that they had made these claims, and she was convinced and concluded that those people, whatever they had experienced, it wasn't psychological in origin. How do you respond to that? Eric? I don't accept it at all. I think that many American psychologists, to judge by their writings, show a very limited knowledge of what can happen to human beings. They don't take into account the manifold varieties of alternate states of consciousness in which people, under all kinds of circumstances, for instance, driving alone at night is one of the classic ones, when you're in a, on, a, on a dark road with no sensory stimuli to sort of keep you alert, you start to imagine things. Now this is not a kind of uh, f purely a fantasy. It is a, a very positive creation. It is something that is being worked at by your subconscious mind. Tim, if, if there are aliens, then are they dangerous? Should we, we be worried by them? I have a feeling that some of them could present a threat. What, what sort of life threat? Takeover or, or what? Well, I wouldn't go so far as that, but certainly there's evidence that a lot of people have been affected by their encounters, affected psychologically, uh, affected physically. Uh, there's some really quite alarming stories of people being affected at a distance. And have there been cases of, of mutilations attacking humans or animals or anything like that? Well, now that you mention it, uh, there have been now thousands of cases in the United States where cattle have been mutilated in bizarre circumstances. Blood is evacuated from the body and in most cases there's not a trace of blood around the animal. There are surgically precise incisions, vital organs have been taken and farmers are mystified. There is no there may be an alternative explanation, but we haven't found it yet. Henry, certainly UFOs have been seen um, in proximity to these Briefly, should we be worried if we see or think we see aliens? Is there anything to be worried about? No, I don't think so. No. Even for our own state of mind? No, I don't even think that. I think these are very positive experiences. I think we should be grateful for them and try to understand them. Briefly, Linda, do you, are you still convinced what you saw was real, that you may have met aliens? I'm 100% convinced, and as bizarre as it may seem, seeing is believing.